Well, nothing's happened on Perrache this week, but Dan has uh, offered to take us out on this. <laughs> okay, so I wasn't expecting to make this video, but luckily Dan gave me this invite to come out, which I properly needed because it was a really crummy week last week. So thanks, Dan. Um, let's start off. Where is Guernsey, first of all, where we get on to before we get on to where is Herm. So at the top of the map, we have the UK. Uh, at the bottom of the map, we have Europe. In the middle of the map, we have the Channel Islands. So we have Guernsey here, Alderney up north, and the, that place, Jersey southwest. We zoom in on Guernsey, and we have Guernsey, Herm, Jetu, Sark. Okay, today we are doing Guernsey to Herm. If you're into boating, which I assume you are by the fact you're here, um, there are several advantages to the Channel Islands when it comes to sailing. Um, well, Guernsey specifically, one thing is we can pull off our moor mooring in this marina and we're out of the marina and we're straight into the ocean, which is fantastic. Um, secondly, it's an archipelago. So you've got several islands all within a day's sailing quite comfortably. First off, we have Herm, which is three and a quarter miles from Guernsey. Then we have Sark, which is seven miles from Guernsey. Then we have Alderney, which is 22 miles from Guernsey. And if you're really into self-punishment, we have Jersey about 26 miles away. And then you can go to France at about 30 miles away. Anyway, you're not here for a geography lesson. You're here for boats. So here we go. We've come out of the QE2 Marina. We're turning east. And there we go. There is Herm uh, off the bow and Jetu just to the right of it. And we're off. Um, so we're not on a sailing boat. Who would have funk it? Uh, we're on this tiny rib thing that Dan owns. Um, it's an Avon Sportsy 490, I think. Sounds like it should be Sea Sport, but it's Sportsy. Weird name. Anyway, uh, it's basically a kind of glorified tender that they bang on top of soup yachts and stuff like that. Um, they're a little bit of a shallow V, so great tender, but they bounce a bit in the chop. Um, I think it's mega. It's the first time I've been on it. It's got 100 horsepower, uh, four stroke off the back. Um, in front of the console here, so on like a bench sheet, there's kind of a weird chaise long kind of thing and then a couple of seats facing aft. Um, but yeah, it goes well. Uh, we got to about 35 mile per hour. So what's that? 30 odd knots, maybe. Um, yeah, it's good fun. Perfect for this kind of thing anyway. The boat I'd really like is an Avon Sea Rider, which is the kind of deeper V hull version of this. Um, pretty old boats. You, Pick them up for not much money um but yeah anyway i'm waffling so we're on our way it's only what did i say it was three and a quarter miles um it takes a kind of commercial passenger ferry 20 minutes to get there on this thing it takes about eight minutes i think on a day like today so yeah let's have a little listen for a bit and see the sights So it's probably not obvious up to this point because uh, the tide's kind of half tide coming up. But the approaches to Herm can be particularly treacherous at low tide. If you watch my low tide video, possible link up here, let's see. Um, you'll see that it's an absolute crazy rock fest around there. Um, and basically there's a series of markers you need to um, adhere to on the way in, uh, depending on which direction you're coming in from. 
Uh, luckily, Dan knows them fairly well, so and we're not drawing much. But this gives you some idea of what the approaches look like at low tide. Yeah, we basically did this special trip where we went out on the spring low tide just to kind of see all the stuff and get an idea of the the feel for the various approaches. But as you can see, uh, you can't really be messing around there, especially if you're in a sailing boat with limited maneuverability and a big fin keel. Okay, so here we are on our approach to Herm Harbour. There's actually two places you can um, stop. Well, actually, there's multiple moorings around the island, but the two kind of hard points, if you will, that you can get off at are the harbour here, um, only at kind of mid to high tide, and a place called Rosair Steps further south, which is um, accessible at all tides, uh, but can be a little bit flaky, and you're limited to mooring the boat on a buoy. Um, so... Normally, there's a commercial passenger ferry that comes and moors up right here, but we're just going past that a bit to where another commercial ferry goes, but we know they're out of action at the moment. Plus, we're only stopping for a pint, so there should be no harm done. So what is Herm? What's so special about it? And why do people keep going back to it year after year? Herm is a small island and measures about 900 metres wide by around about two kilometres long. It has two pubs, which is a good ratio relative to its size, a hotel, a shop, a coffee shop, a school with about seven pupils in it, an 11th century chapel, a fire station, which we can see on the left of this picture here, which has a tractor towed fire tender, so I hope your fire is burning slowly if you have one. It has several stunning beaches um, and cliff walks. It also has a number of anchorages uh, nestled into some of the bays around the north of the island, uh, which have got stunning views of both Herm and Sark in the, in the distance to the east. Uh, the island itself is quite steep. Uh, it has like a, a spine running down the back of it with a lane going down it called Spine Road. Um, yeah, you can see it on the map here. Uh, here's some pictures from my walk down Spine Road um, and some from the cliff paths as well. You can walk around the outside of the island in about two hours and yeah, it's a beautiful place to visit. Some fantastic beaches as well. It's very popular in the summer. But you go down winter and the place is almost deserted and it's still got a lovely charm to it. And best of all, they even open the pub in the winter. And an odd fact, Herm actually sits directly south of the Isle of Portland. There you go. Now you know. You'll also notice there's no cars or push bikes allowed, only quad bikes and tractors for the staff. Anyway, we're only here for the pub, and here we are. Deeper hole then. Does that mean it cuts better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Cheers, Dan. Well, this really was a whistle stop tour. This trip took about an hour all in and was really a lovely way to take my mind off the broken nose and the flooded kitchen that had basically been the focus of my last week. Um, I didn't actually intend to make a video at all this week as I've not really had the time with all that aforementioned stuff, but I'm glad I got the chance to put this together and thanks again to Dan for actually taking me out, uh, even if this is just a short video. I'm looking to visit Herm and Sark this summer on Perrache, uh, and I'm going to put a bit more effort into documenting the trip properly. And when I'm in the islands, I'll get some decent aerial footage of, of the boat on the way there and of the actual islands when I get there. I'll get a bit more footage and give you a tour of the actual islands themselves. Um, if you were pleasantly surprised by Herm, Sark will absolutely blow your mind. That place is another world. In fact, up to a few years ago, they still had the feudal system. Incredible place. Now we get to enjoy a bit of a sunset blast back from Herm to Guernsey. We thought it was going to be rougher this way than it was on the way out, but actually uh, we were able to get the boat going a fair bit faster. It was a lot less choppy going this way. So yeah, enjoy.